What's up guys, Scott Martin here, chilling on the shores of Lake Okeechobee. We're gonna be talking about spinner baits today. And you know, in this tip, I wanna to explain to you about how to choose the right spinner bait for the right day. You know, when you go in Bass Pro Shops, you go up down the spinner bait aisle and there's all these different colors, different blade combinations, lots of different choices, right? Well, I'm gonna break it down pretty simple. I have four of more, some of my favorite ones here behind me and I wanna talk about how I'm gonna choose the right ones to fish with. You know, in this first video, we're sitting here in the Rim Canal right outside of Clewiston, and uh, this is a neat spot because it has a lot of shoreline cover. It has lay down trees, it has cypress trees, it has grass points. But what's interesting about it and what you need to know is that right off the bank here, about another 20, 30 feet, it drops off into pretty deep water. So what does that mean? That means the majority of the fish you're gonna catch are gonna be basically 15 to 20 feet from the bank or all the way up in that cover. And you need to pick the right spinnerbait for that application. And my choice is a Colorado bladed spinnerbait, okay? You know, you have willow leaf blades and you have Colorado blades. And this one here is a Colorado blade. It's actually a double Colorado. And, uh, and that's a really good choice for a situation like this for two reasons. Number one, the water's a little stained right here. So those double Colorado blades are gonna emit a little bit more vibration than say a willow leaf blade would. And number two, and most importantly, it's gonna slow that spinnerbait down. So this spinnerbait's gonna come through the water a lot slower than a willow leaf blade. So in this tip, I'm gonna explain all the different things about rod, line, retrieve, what you wanna look for with these type of spinnerbaits. Now, before you get off this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel because next week we're gonna be posting a video where I'm gonna take you back in the grass here at Okeechobee. We're gonna throw double willow leaf spinnerbaits and try to catch a big old fish back in there. And I'm gonna talk all about those. But today's video is all about the Colorado blade. So let's jump up, make a little pass down this little bank here, see what we can come up with. Well, here we're in the Rim Canal and, and there's lots of different types of cover here. We have cypress trees, which is beautiful. We have little grass points, a lily pad line. But again, it drops straight off in a 10 or 11 foot of water here. So the majority of your opportunities are gonna be right against the cover itself. You know, underneath these trees, in between the trees. And again, slow rolling that spinner bait down through here is what you're gonna wanna do. A lot of bait in here. I see little, little minnows jumping out of the water. But again, with a Colorado blade, that bait's gonna go a lot slower, and that's gonna keep your bait in the strike zone a lot longer, and that's important. Uh, a willow leaf spinner bait right now would go too fast. There's one right there. That's a nice one too. Look at that, a little roll cast. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about, guys. I actually threw that spinner bait right underneath that tree behind us, and he smoked that thing. That is what I'm talking about just a little sidearm cast, but it allowed that spinner bait, that little Colorado bladed spinner bait, kept it in the strike zone a lot longer, and boom, caught our first pass. That's a pretty good sign. I haven't made, but just a couple casts in here, right by that cypress tree. That was, that was awesome. <laughs> that was really cool. But that's, that's what you want to pay attention to, is picking the right kind of spinner bait. Now, if you notice how I'm casting this spinner bait, I'm casting it kind of sidearm because I have a shorter rod. This is an Akuma, medium heavy action rod, six foot nine inches long, it's an all purpose. It's a TCS rod, one of the ones I designed. I got it rigged up on a six to one gear ratio reel. I want a little bit slower reel when I'm spinnerbait fishing like this. And I like it on a pretty heavy line. This is P-line fluorocarbon, 17 pound test. You don't need you know 10 pound line or anything like that. I like a little heavier line. So when I get a bite like that under a tree, boom, I can get them on out. And that's real important. But this shorter rod allows me to make accurate casts all up into the cover. The retrieve of the spinnerbait is pretty simple. I like a slow to medium retrieve. I kind of like it where I can barely see those blades turning. I can see just a little bit of flash and I keep my rod pretty much level. Every once in a while I'll give it a little pop or just a small hesitation to, uh, to kind of change the vibration of that spinnerbait. And a lot of times that's when those fish will bite it. And if you notice how I'm keeping my rod to the side that the bank's on. I'm not on this side of the boat, I'm on this side of the boat because that's where the cover is. I wanna keep my bait as close to the cover as I can. So I keep my rod on the side that I'm going down. There's one. Look at that, right there, right there in the exact little spot. Right in between that grass and that little pocket right back in there. 
And again, having this shorter rod like we talked about, this shorter Akuma rod and this Colorado bladed spinnerbait, it allowed me to slow that bait down in there and get that strike. That fish heard that vibration, came out and wrecked that spinnerbait. And it was a perfect little cast just like that. That is cool. I tell you what, guys, today's conditions are perfect for a spinnerbait. You know, you, you think about throwing a spinnerbait, you want to throw it on those days that it's cloudy like this. Cloudy, overcast skies, windy. That's very, very good spinnerbait days. I'll tell you a day not to throw a spinnerbait. You know, today we're getting a few bites catching them on spinnerbaits. Tomorrow, if it's dead calm and sunny, a spinnerbait might not be one of my best choices. I might come back in here and flip some of this or throw a worm or flip a jig, whatever it may be, something that I can get up tighter into this cover. But on overcast conditions, these fish are usually out feeding and uh, spinnerbait's a great choice. It allows me to cover a lot of water, learn a lot about the spot and the area and, uh, and the fish just, as you can see, they wreck it. Now when I'm retrieving this spinnerbait, if you notice I'm just reeling it pretty steady, not really stopping it. Every once in a while I'll give it a little pump or just a small little vi microscopic little twitch. And all that's doing is creating a little extra flash and it changes that vibration of that spinnerbait just for a split second. So if there's a fish close by, oh, one hit it right there. If there's a fish close by, a lot of times that'll trigger the strike. Spinner baits are really uh, a really weedless bait. You can really throw them back into some pretty thick cover. Uh, you know, I like to fish them on pretty heavy line, anywhere from say 15 to 17 pound. I typically throw fluorocarbon, and uh, if I get it back into some grass or maybe get it back into uh, a little tangled up spot, the one thing I'm not going to do is sit there and twitch the bait and try to hop it out of the cover. A lot of times I'll throw it through some grass like that. And if I'm getting a little stuck, right, I'll just use the reel to kind of power it through there. Like right there, I'm getting a little stuck. I'm not gonna twitch my rod. I just use the reel to basically power that spinnerbait through there and it won't get hung up as much. For all your fishing line needs, Bass Pro is the place to be. They've got the largest selection anywhere, like the new P-Line TCB Teflon Coated x braid For more information, be sure to stop in a store. We'll see you guys. There's another one right there. Oh, it's a bigger fish. Oh, he pulled off. Dang. That was a nice one, dude. Right in there. That was a bigger fish. I'm not sure why he got off, but he did. You know, you have a couple other choices to make, too, with the spinnerbait. You know, the one I'm throwing here is, is, a, is basically a 3-8 size. If you're fishing shoreline cover like this, where it's, you know, three, four feet deep at max, you know, you're gonna wanna fish a 3-8 style bait. You know, if it's a deeper bank, obviously, uh, you can get away with a half ounce, or if you wanna try to get that bait down a little bit deeper. You know, in the early spring, when the water temperatures start to get cold, sometimes you wanna slow roll that close to the bottom, so a half ounce spinner bait might be a better choice. But in the fall, or, you know, like right now, early fall, the water's still warm, I wanna keep that bait kinda close to the surface. Basically, wherever I think the bait is, is where I want my spinner bait. If I think the bait's down seven or eight feet, I'm gonna get a bigger spinner bait and get it down there closer to the bottom. There's another one right there. Feels like a better fish. Oh yeah, look at that one. That's what we're talking about, guys. That's a good one right there. Oh. Wow, I think I found me a good little spot here, guys. I tell you what, pretty good tip, wasn't it? Colorado spinner baits. Now, hopefully you'll watch this tip and you'll know when to throw them, how to pick them out, what rod to use, get on a nice little bank like this, catch some nice fish, so what a cool little deal. So thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, drop us some comments. I'll be on there answering your questions. And uh, that was a lot of fun. And, and next week, remember, subscribe to the channel because next week we're gonna have a fishing tip on double willow leaf spinner baits. So I'm gonna get you back in the grass, see if we can't catch a donkey. So again, thanks for watching, guys. I'm out. Dinkies. We're, we're dinked up. We're here. dinked up. Go ahead, stick him in the box there, Dink Master. Me up, peace.
think a moving bait is going to be one of my first choices and you know, there's lots of different things that i could throw uh, a live target square bill crankbait would be a good choice i have an impact jig here with a little swim bait on the back